Welcome back to the series. Today, Kevin is with us again to discuss mini spectrometers and show us how they are being used effectively in the food and drink industry. So Kevin, what are you going to be showing us today? Well, today I'm going to be running through an example of how our microspectrometers can be used in the food and drink industry. We've previously heard about how these can be used in medical applications, so now we will see a bit about the versatility of these devices. As discussed before, these are designed to be ultra-compact, reducing their physical size as well as power requirements by combining multiple different components seen in larger spectrometers into unique single components. This allows the creation of handheld devices like the one I have here. Can you tell us a little bit more about the demo? So, this unit here is one that analyses something very close to my heart. Beer! So, we have one of our microspectrometers, a white LED and all the required electronics and batteries etc in this casing here. This unit can communicate with a smartphone or other similar devices using Bluetooth. Using a special app we have on this phone allows us to analyse different beers and find out a bit more about them. Now, while this unit is not an actual product we sell, it does show off some of the capabilities of our microspectrometer. The app we're using today will let us know a bit about the colour and style of the beer we have, and I'll run through exactly how it does this a bit later on. Now, colour may be something that seems obvious, but there are subtle differences that indicate different styles and, of course, different flavours. Colour measurement is also vitally important during the brewing process, as it allows the brewery to ensure that the beer colour is consistent between different batches. It's also possible to use microspectrometers such as this in order to prevent counterfeit goods being sold. You would use a microspectrometer to compare the product you have to a reference value for that product. So how does the demo work? This demo works by calculating something known as the SRM number. This is the standard reference method number. Now, the standard reference method involves passing light, specifically 430 nanometer light, through the beer sample. You then get a weaker signal coming out the other side as some of the light has been absorbed. This weaker signal gives you the absorbance factor. Using this and a constant known as the SRM factor, you can then calculate the SRM number. The higher the SRM number, the darker beer you have. Now, typically this is done by transmission and requires a fairly complicated setup. But with the microspectrometer, it's possible to use this compact module here and perform these measurements in reflectance mode. The module shines light from the LED onto the sample and the spectrometer detects the returned light. It then calculates the SRM number of the sample by comparing the spectra it has with a library of known values and lets you know what you have in front of you. This is useful for verification purposes, but for a completely unknown sample, you would still need to use the transmission mode mentioned before. Well, I'm sure you can't wait to get the beer out and show us how it works. Oh, how right you are. So let's get to it. But unfortunately, first we have to open the app and then we have to calibrate the device with a dark measurement. This is as simple as clicking on calibration, capture dark reading. Then we just cover the aperture of the device, take a reading in the darkness. Once we have this, the device is all set up and ready to go. Next, we have to get our samples ready. Today, we're using a Sierra Nevada and an Arbuckles Lager. We will do some measurements and see if our module can tell them apart. First things first, we have to measure out five milliliters, carefully avoiding any froth or bubbles, as these will affect our measurements. Then we place a sample on these chrome sample stages. Here's one I prepared earlier. Now, we need five milliliters, as this is the calibrated volume for performing these measurements, and the chrome simply allows us to get a stronger signal reflected back. Finally, everything is set up. Let's get measuring. Step one, get the module in position. Press the button, and here we go. The light passes through the beer, back up to the spectrometer, and we can see the spectra of the beer. Show results. Yep, so we can see that we have an SRM number of seven, a style of pale ale, and a commercial example of this style would be a Sierra Nevada. So it's picked up the right beer for what we know we're using. Now let's see how we get on with our second sample. Same process for this second sample, so let's have a go. Module in position, press the button. 
the light is reflected through the beer and we get our second spectra. Show results again. Yeah, so here we have an SRM of 4, a style of lager and an example would be Arbuckles. So we got it again. So we've just seen that it's possible to use the Hamamatsu microspectrometer for the verification of beer through colour measurement. But of course this type of measurement can be done for many other areas in the food and drink industry, whether for verification purposes like we've just seen, anti-counterfeiting or for investigating the properties of unknown samples or for quality control. To find out more about how these microspectrometers can be used in your industry or application, get in touch.